Hey guys, in this problem, the function that we're given is y equals three, so that's this horizontal line at three. And we're asked to consider the region bounded by y equals three, or f of x equals three, the x-axis, which is this purple line, and x equals one and x equals four. So it's basically a square of side three. This side is three, four minus one, and then this height is three as well. And the question is asking us to rotate this or revolve this about the x-axis. So what I want you to first imagine is this square coming out of the screen towards you, sort of spinning down this way and then going behind the computer screen and coming out the other side. So I'll draw it first from this perspective. So you'll see some green panes coming out towards you. Now at this point, this green uh, line really represents the square that's coming straight out of the screen. So perpendicular to your computer screen out towards you. And now if I continue to rotate uh, the one that's about here, this is the one that's going straight down. So it's basically a reflection of the original red square we had up here. This uh, it would be the reflection of the green square, and then it sort of goes back full circle. Now I'm going to change the orientation of this or change the perspective so that you can kind of see how the revolution actually happens. So again, just to orient you, this is the y-axis. This is the line y equals 3, my bounds 1 and 4, and the x-axis. So now you're going to see that this point is going to go around this way, come back, and go into the screen and again. So let's see if we revolve this. So you can see that at 0.25, well, you guys don't see the numbers on the screen, but around there, this is the uh, square that was coming straight out towards you. And if I change the perspective, you can see it's the, the one where the square is going uh, straight out of the page towards you. If I continue to spin it further, it goes like so. That's the plane that we saw uh, that was a reflection across the x-axis of the square above the x-axis. And now if I continue to spin this, it's going to go all the way back to the other side. So hopefully you can recognize that the cross-section of this would be a circle because it's a revolution that's creating the shape. And if I were to spin this further, this is the perfect circle from one perspective. And if I spin it the other way, here's the other base. Obviously, it's not going to be exactly perfect, but you can kind of sort of see that this is a circular base. And if I turn it sideways to where X and Y really ought to be, somewhere there, this is the side of the cylinder. So this is the top of the cylinder. This is the bottom of the cylinder. And if I rotate that cylinder slightly, then this is one circular face, and the other circular face is on this side. Let's look at another one. So here we have the curve sine x. We know it's sine x. And we're asked to look at the region bounded by the x-axis, which is this purple line again, sine x, x equals 0, and x equals pi. So those are my two limits of integration. And now we're asked to spin this about uh, the x-axis again. So imagine that this point up here is going to come down go into the screen, go behind the screen, then come back again. This point is not going to go anywhere, and this point is not going to go anywhere because they're already on the axis of rotation. So I'll spin this. You'll notice that this sine curve right here, you can't see it because it's on uh, the x-axis from this perspective, but this is the curve coming out straight towards your eye. So if I turn it sideways, you'll hopefully see that. And then if I continue to spin it, you'll see that it's coming out towards you. And then about somewhere there, this is uh, the reflection of this part of the curve across the x-axis. So if I change the perspective back to the way it was, you can see that this bottom curve is a reflection of this top curve. And if I turn it sideways, Hopefully you see that as well, that the sine curve was going up and then down on the other side. 
and now it's doing the same thing on this side. So perspective makes it a little bit difficult to, to observe these changes, but let's change it back to the way it was. And let's continue spinning it. So you can see that once I create the entire shape, I'm going to essentially create a almost like a football shaped object. And if I turn it perfectly this way, you're going to see that my cross sections are circles. Um, and if I turn it sideways, here's where you can see the sine curve. So again, take it off. Let's turn it maybe quarter cycle, somewhere there maybe. And if I spin it around now, you're going to see that this is just the part that's coming out of the screen towards you and nothing else. And if I turn it the other way, then again, this direction is the top half of the solid of revolution that's coming out towards you on the screen. And then if I continue to spin this, this is still towards you out of the screen. And now we're going behind the screen. So if I change my perspective back to the way it was, it's my orientation. Right now, the, the circle is behind the screen and you can continue to see the shadow. So right there is about where it's behind the screen, behind the x-axis. And again, if I change my perspective, you can see that. You can see that it's like a, almost like a three quarters, not exactly, but you can kind of sort of see that it's about three. So right there is where it's behind uh, the screen, behind the x-axis. And then I can complete the revolution by going all the way through. So this would look like a spindle shape, or sometimes people call it the Goodyear blimp. Uh, but you can see that it's the curved sine x that's been rotated about the x-axis. Let's do one more in this video. This is the graph of 2 minus x squared. So again, just to orient ourselves, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. This is the line x equals negative 1. This is the line x equals positive 1. And we're asked to find what happens if we rotate the region bounded by 2 minus x squared, y equals 1. So this is the x-axis. y equals 1 would be one unit higher. x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1. So if I didn't have uh, the revolution there, let's move it back to 0, then I would have this entire region going from here all the way to there. So basically, wherever my mouse is, this entire thing would be covered in. But that's not the case. That's not where we are revolving. So let me move this back to where it needs to be. And now if I spin it, this top piece is going to come out of the screen towards you. Then it's going to spin around this way. Then it's going to spin back behind the screen and then back up here. These two points are not going to go anywhere because they're on the axis of rotation or revolution. So again, we spin. This is coming out towards you. This is the top quarter coming out towards you. Then it goes down away from you. This is about where uh, it's no longer in front of you, but now going behind the screen. And if you pay close attention to this shadow, you'll see that the shape starts to grow behind the screen away from you. Let's do it again from a different perspective. So if I were to change it off to the side a little bit, you'll see that this is going to be coming out towards you. And then about there is where, you know, you're a quarter way through. And then you can continue to spin. That's about halfway through. You're barely, you're almost touching the x-axis there. And then now you go behind the screen, three quarters of the way through, and all the way through. So in this case, it, it looks like it's a perfect sphere, but it really isn't because... Uh, this portion here is not a semicircle. So it's going to look uh, like a squashed um, uh, football. So imagine that you, know, you, you pushed it on either side and you, you sort of made it less pointy. Or you can think of this curve, but imagine if this side were pushed in and this side were pushed in, you'd get something like this.